The most important thing when this aggression ends, and I hope that is going to be very, very soon, is that we make sure that our children uh, and the horrors they have seen will not turn into hate, but will turn into love of their people, of their culture that is very tolerant and to be part of our liberation and uh, part of building a state that we will be proud of. In the first couple of days of the aggression, I lost seven members of my extended family, my cousin, her husband, her children, but I assure you, this is the story of every family in Gaza. And the wound, the wound is huge, is, is huge. Um, it, it will take us time to uh, heal these wounds. What Israel has, has done is actually creating a deep scar in our humanity as community of nations, because Israel has been normalizing, normalizing the mass murder of children, of women, the mass destruction of hospitals, schools, churches, mosques, the starvation. We need action. We need enforcement of laws. We need sanctions on any party that violate international law. And Israel is not only violating international law. Israel is bombing international law. They have bombed many UN premises. As you know, they have killed more UN workers in the last few weeks than uh, uh, the sum of UN workers for so many years. And this is a test for our international system. And this is also a test for our humanity because Israel has completely and utterly destroyed all the rules we built after the Second World War. It's unconscionable that we only want to reach or seek to reach pauses, as the Western term is. So we pause for a few hours or a few days. Uh, we provide some food and water to our children, and then they resume killing the children. So this does not make sense whatsoever. We need to make sure that this is comprehensive and permanent. We must really turn this tragedy into a momentum for freedom and a momentum for peace and a momentum to uh, uh, address the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people.